You sure know how to turn on the... I, I am all about being spicy. My head on straight. There we go. Is your head on straight? No. Come join us out here. Good afternoon from Alaska Cut the Cord. Um, today got kind of a sweet unboxing for you. I recently traded off a firearm a pistol in particular that I really didn't care for and I purchased this G-Force Arms. This is, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, oh you still can't tell. There you go. This is what is called, it's a, it's a bullpup design um, with the magazine to the back like this and your bolt is all the way back here. Normally your bolt is in front of your grip would be up in here. So you're thinking, well, that's useless. The barrel's only six inches long. That's not true. The barrel comes all the way back to here. So it's actually really compact. Um, first impressions, it seems really solid. It's got some pretty good weight to it. It's got, it's ambidextrous on for your magazine release right here. It's got the same thing on this side, but a push button style. Your safety also is ambidextrous. That the bolt's not back, so it doesn't move, but both ways. And then on top of that, if you're right-handed, it's really inconvenient to have to, you know, bring Rotate the so it's in the sun. Bring the gun down in order to reach over here to then pick it up again. So what they have in this case is this little lever, this charging handle, can be moved from one side to the other, um, which is really pretty awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> it also has uh, kind of military style sights. Uh, these, they flip down and latch, flip down and latch, and then you just hit the button and they pop up really nice um, yeah I haven't tried to break it down or anything yet seems pretty simple but let me give you a, a better illustration of why people like a bullpup design and what makes it so much more compact now if we were to compare this to say a normal shotgun okay again on this you have all this material behind your bolt and your barrel doesn't start till here. And it's not a terribly long barrel. So again, if we compare them side by side, you can see the difference. These actually both have exactly the same length barrel, but one gun is, this one is 38, and this one is 28. So it's a 10 inch difference in the length of the gun. <clears throat> I have not fired this weapon at all so that's what we're gonna do now let's see how it works I, I know nothing about these so let's see what it does okay okay so when I brought ammo with us from the lesser 48 I happen to bring some nitro turkey rounds I haven't seen a turkey in Alaska yet, and these are usually pretty hot rounds. They're three inch rounds. They're a heavy shot. So I've got three of them here. Let's see how this goes. Okay. They're kind of, the, the turkey rounds, the heavier rounds, they have a lot more brass here than a, a normal, like a bird shot round. I'll show you. This would be the brass on a on a turkey versus the brass on a bird shot so there's going to be a lot more recoil with the nitro turkey and i just want to see how it cycles with both rounds she's a a short a load okay so i've got three rounds there let's see what it does oh safety first kids Put your ears on. We put these on. Okay. So we'll load the magazine. <clears throat> we'll chamber around. Chambered fine. It's on safe. So 
switch it to fire. That's kind of hard to move. It really actually hurts. Okay. Downrange, we have an empty monster mean bean can. Let's see if we can hit that. It's quite a bit of recoil. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, you wanna shoot it once? No. The, the turkey rounds are really heavy loads. Woo, I forgot how that hurts. <laughs> okay, nice thing on the last round, the bolt stays open, easy to release the mag. At that point, she's good. Now let's try it. Oh, sorry. I forget, I'm yelling with the earmuffs on. Let's try it with some normal birdshot loads and see if that works. Now, typically, this isn't a hunting rifle, so to speak. This is more for like a home defense. And you wouldn't be home defensing with uh, number eight rabbit loads, but let's see if the gun will cycle with that or not. A few times you've made it very sharp. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm not sure if how these are even going to work. If you notice, these are two and three quarters where the, the turkey rounds that I fired were three inch long. So let's see if these will even feed in the gun. I don't know. So again, insert the magazine. Inserts well. Safe to fire. Oh, ears. Hold on. Okay. Let's see if these will cycle. I don't know if they will or not. Cycle. That's good. Cycle. That one was a little low. Well, I'd say other than I think the gun is shooting a little bit low, um, it worked great. It cycled with the two and three quarter or the three inch. A um, lot less recoil on the two and three quarter. That was much less painful. Um, but yeah, other than that, really kind of a, a nice gun. It's manufactured in Turkey. Let me know what you think of that. It's also got a spot right here for a sling, so you could carry the gun, you know, close to your chest. Um, this on the end, I'm not gonna go full through a, a full breakdown, but this is not a silencer or anything. I, I, I don't really know what the purpose of it is other than to remove the barrel. But if you look in the end, one neat thing about this is it has different chokes. And something that the gun came with, I'll show you here. It comes with two magazines and it came with different chokes and the choke wrench. I'll show you that here. <clears throat> so in this little box, comes with two different chokes and this is the choke wrench to put in the end and tighten it down. So, and they, they go in this way first, and then the wrench on the outside. I would imagine you can also fire slugs through it. I haven't tried that since I just got it. That's it in a nutshell, and that is the difference between a bullpup and a normal shotgun. They also make bullpup designs in different rifles. Um, again, just keeping it more compact. It also has, I don't know if you need it, but it's got a Picatinny rail down here the whole body of this is aluminum so it's not it's not a plastic it's not a polymer of any kind um, and it seems like a really sturdy well-made rifle okay so yes now have it always pointed downrange yeah. and press your bolt release okay now it's loaded now when you're ready you'll switch it over to fire and that is really hard to move oh not so bad that time okay Phyllis
Is that a really hard trigger pull? Eh, I guess I don't know. Remember, it's the center of your index finger. Or you'll pull right. Ah, look at that. We had our first malfunction. We had a misfeed right there. So now so, pull the bolt back to clear it. Put it on safe. Pull the bolt back. Pick it out of there. Let let the bolt go ahead. Pull it pull it back again. There. Always let it slam forward. Okay. <clears throat> Yep. There's that. Yeah. And again, it did the same thing. I don't know why it's doing it to you and not to me, but that that is something that I kind of worried would would happen on a gun like this. It's not really meant for hunting quail. Um, and using the lighter load. Now, if you loaded your own and you put a few more grains of powder in there, likely you could uh, get away from that issue. Um, but with a heavier, like a three inch round, um, even if it were, you know, just a heavier load in a three inch shell, you're not gonna have that issue. Um, but with the really light loads, and this is meant for rabbits or grouse or whatever you have. So you gotta flip the thing up. But yeah, there you have it. Okay, as you may or may not have noticed here, we're shooting off the back of a different vehicle today. Um, let me take you a walk around here and show you. This is something we picked up recently, uh, more for Phyllis than anything, but this is a 1995 Toyota 4Runner with the three liter. Um, when I bought it, the guy that I bought it from had completely gone through the motor. The three liters have a tendency to blow head gaskets after so many years. And he completely went through it. Um, rods, mains, all the gaskets, all of that. It's in really good condition. We're gonna buff out the paint. There's a few things that need to be done, the ball joints and the front glass, you gotta see that. If you've never seen an Alaskan windshield, let me show you what that looks like. Okay. I don't know how well any of that shows up on camera, if if at all. But the windshield is cracked in about 19 different places. And um, yeah, it's got about eight rock chips in it. So that's going to get replaced and we're going to do some different stuff with this. This is going to be kind of a, a neat rig in our future. Um, and we're going to eliminate one of our other rigs that we have. So just trying to keep it a little simpler around here and uh, yeah, not have any bills. It's kind of the point of being out here on Alaska Cut the Cord. So Phyllis. Love you, bye.